hundred years ago this month, in the old Church Road monumental stonemason's yard, owned by John Newton Cox, the finishing touches were being made to the town's first and only cinema. They called it the Picture House. On the afternoon of Saturday the 20th of April, 1912, the new Picture House was opened, and the first film to be shown was a short newsreel showing the ill-fated Titanic setting sail from Southampton just six days previously. The proceeds from that show were donated to the Lord Mayor of London's fund. Moving picture shows were first staged in Clevedon in the early 1900s and one of the early cinematograph entrepreneurs had been the local stonemason J.N. Cox who had hand-wound the projector while his son Victor accompanied the silent films on the piano. So popular were these performances that Victor and his father soon formed a company called the Clevedon Cinephone Company and set about building the first of the three picture houses to stand on the old Church Road site. The 200-seat cinema was so well supported that within a year the building was expanded without a single performance being missed. The major improvements commenced on the 1st of June 1913. They included an enlarged auditorium, a sliding roof to improve ventilation, more exits, and most important, an increase in the seating from 200 to 349. Below the screen, which was at the old church road end of the building, was an orchestra pit with an upright piano upon which stood a gramophone to provide musical accompaniment. Contemporary reports claim that the new cinema had comfortable tip-up seats upholstered in red leather perfect ventilation and a flickerless picture. The new form of entertainment proved such a success that in 1920 Victor Cox announced that the picture house was to be once again enlarged and again without closing for a single performance the old building was magically transformed into the one we know today and the workmen were given a bonus of a free Sharabang outing to Cheddar. A local paper suggested that in the new picture house, Clevedon will have a structure of which it will have every reason to be proud. With a seating capacity of 800 accommodated on two levels, the Art Deco interior was cheaply achieved by incorporating pressed metal sheeting to line the walls and to form the barrel vaulted ceiling. The first film was The Kid, starring Charlie Chaplin. In 1922, the Oak Room Cafe was opened, and on Tuesday afternoons, customers could enjoy a pot of tea before the matinee. The talkies came to the picture house in 1927, heralding the heyday of picture going in Clevedon. The full house signs were regularly to be seen. Like other cinemas around the country, the picture house remained open throughout the war. In 1941, while showing the Basil Rathbone film Rio, a German bomber could be heard overhead. It dropped a bomb over in Hillside Road, and the shrapnel pitted stonework can still be seen to this day. With the war over, Victor Cox finally sold out and won Maximilian Korn bought the picture house and promptly renamed it the Maxime. And so it remained for the next 11 years, until in April 1956, with another change of ownership, it received its third and final name, the Curzon. In 1967, one of the longest-serving employees of the cinema, Stanley Newton, retired. He had started on the 1912 opening day as a chocolate boy 
and later became the projectionist, earning him the nickname of Stan the Cameraman. During the screening of the film Batman Forever on the 4th of July 1995, it was announced that the company who owned the Curzon was going into receivership and that the fight was on to save the old cinema for the town. Enter John Webber and a small band of willing supporters who became hell-bent on not only saving the cinema but running it as well. They succeeded and the Curzon entered the latest phase of its life as a community cinema. About ten years ago the roof started to leak. A survey of the building suggested that the problem was becoming really serious and that the board of trustees who now ran the cinema were in need of a large cash injection, a million pounds or more, to put it right. Several bids were made to the Heritage Lottery Fund for assistance and finally in 2010 the news came through that their bid had been partially successful and the work could commence on patching up the old building. Throughout all this upheaval the principle of the show must go on has been upheld and the claim that the cinema we now know as the Curzon has been in continuous use for 100 years can be more or less proved and also that it is probably the longest running cinema in the country. So, happy birthday Curzon and here's to a long future life and continued success. This month our resident gardener Carol Price is at the Mary Elton Primary School in Strode Road with a group of very enthusiastic helpers. Uh, we're trying to we're trying to make it all to little bit pieces, and then we're going to flatten it like that. Well, we're trying to make all of this leveled so it can be used for planting things. Well, we're trying to get rid of the lumps in the soil. Yeah, we're trying to make the soil crumbly. And what are you going to plant there? Um, I think it's gooseberries. Or Sprinkle a little bit of that nice compost. You can see it's even softer and finer than the soil you've got here. That's it. So outdoors thinly. Thinly, where they are to crop. Brilliant, keep going. Crop 1.5 centimetres half deep. We've made the soil nice and crumbly, see, nice and small. And then we've cheated a little bit by putting some nice soft compost on there. Where Josh is is one end and this is the other end. And we're going to sprinkle these seeds along on the top of that soil. They're very tiny seeds, we don't want to bury them too deep because they've only got enough energy in them to get to the top. So you can see how small they are? Yeah. Put your hand out and I'll put a little bit in each, right? And will you want to, I want you to sprinkle them along the, little, the line that's in front of where you all stood. I've got another packet, so don't worry, I'm going to get some more. Right, I'll come down to that end. Do you have to put any more compost in Not at the moment because the next job's going to be more of the same. In. Stand back, move the gloves away. That's it. Okay. And I don't think we're going to get any rain this week, so who's going to come out at the lunchtime and make sure that they get one watering either at break time or lunchtime? And you must do it with the rose on. See this? Yeah, I Because, listen, they must have a sprinkle, not a deluge, otherwise they'll bounce around. <laughs> Um, we're digging up mud so we can plant um we can plant um long plants into the ground. See all the roots around 
be careful. Holly hops go to about two yeah. meters tall sometimes. She hops like right here. Yeah. Wow. Right. Oh, wow. Because you can help them because they want some of the water out and they can. Oh, can you help them with the water? Yeah. Oh, I've done it! So we planted these about two weeks ago and they still haven't popped up, but they will be. Is this where we get our veggies from? I don't know. Yeah, tip it upside down and catch it in your other hand. That's it. Now be brave. That's it. Don't worry. Hang on, Tyler, they're having a go. That's it, well done, that's beautifully held. Oh, lovely. And then you just tap the soil around it. You can use your fingers for that, don't they? And then we'll get a watering can and just give them a sprinkle of water to help their roots settle into the ground. It's going to taste Right, no, 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 no. All kneel down that way. I need to experiment. I'm not kneeling down. You don't need a trailer. I don't want to. Now, look, Tyler's prepared a nice little line of soft pot bottom. One or two in each. Now they're very much a different, oh, no. Oops, different oh, size. Oh, what if he they're landed on one of the plants? Oh, the carrots. It was like oh, oh, different size. Beetroot. Or is it wow. like? Wow. Do we plant it in the different? Apparently, a secret eating with bare hands. Following the withdrawal of North Somerset Council's funding for the maintenance of some of the flower beds in Clevedon, the Town Council has now agreed to take over and plant some of the more prominent beds themselves. From now onwards, the local council will be responsible for this pretty wishing well bed overlooking Salthouse Fields and the circular bed by the Little Harp restaurant. The large bed overlooking the bandstand, which is at present looking splendid with colourful spring bedding, will also be the Town Council's responsibility, as will the deserted sailing boat near the sailing club's headquarters. Other beds like these overlooking the Salthouse field will be maintained by North Somerset Council and will be planted with shrubs and perennials with the aim of reducing maintenance costs. As we were reported in our January edition, the money collected at the annual New Year's Day swim this year was donated to the Community Association at Sunhill so that repair work could be undertaken to their building. Since then the work has been progressing on the leaking roof above Prince's Hall and during March work started on replacing the rotten timbers over the entrance and foyer of the hall. In recent weeks the building has been the victim of metal theft. Twice now thieves have climbed up the sides of the building and stolen lead from the roof. But now a substitute material has been used to replace the missing lead. And though there is evidence that a would-be thief has carried out an inspection, so far the roof has remained intact. The High Cliff in Wellington Terrace is the latest in a long line of Clevedon hotels to apply for planning permission to be turned into flats. Plans were submitted in March to refurbish the two villas that comprise the hotel and to construct a full height infill extension to replace the central reception area. This conversion would provide space to accommodate 14 self-contained two bedroom apartments. We are pleased to report that the Regent Public House in Hill Road now has this protective tunnel over the pathway. The aim is to shelter passers-by from the many chunks of masonry that have been falling from the building. And further down Hill Road, the collapsed wall on the zigzag steps has now been cleared and the wall has been safely rebuilt. The popular shortcut up to Dial Hill is now fully open and available for use once again.
It was confirmed by house builder Cotswold Homes, which is building new houses in Strode Road, that they will make a £500 contribution to the cost of repainting the bandstand to give it a fresh look in time for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee celebrations in June. Colin Hall, chairman of North Somerset Council, who owns the building, was delighted with the news. The main project, which is to get the bandstand fully repaired and redecorated, will include replacement balustrade panels and reconfigured steps for easier access. The project requires listed building consent and North Somerset Council are seeking approval to undertake this work which will cost in the region of £15,000. Meanwhile, down at the marine lake end of the seafront, North Somerset Council has made a bid to the Heritage Lottery Fund for finance to undertake the much needed repairs to the 83-year-old amenity. The lake is extensively used by many local schools and clubs and is even becoming popular as an outdoor swimming pool. The Marine Lake Enthusiast Group, Marlins, are behind the bid, along with the Town Council and the Civic Society. The staff and friends of a local solicitor's firm have been walking for charity. They walked from their office in Clifton to their office here in the old Reading Public House in Alexandra Road. So how was it? I'm sure it must have been enjoyable somewhere. <laughs> Being members of the legal profession, of course, meant that their route from Clifton to Clevedon was by no means straightforward. They took the circuitous route via Pill and Porter's Head to make the distance 19 miles instead of the usual 13. Their charity was a school in the Khmer region of Cambodia. In the mid-1970s, 1.7 million Khmer people were killed in a form of ethnic cleansing by the military Khmer Rouge regime led by Pol Pot. The result is that 57% of the Khmer population is now under 17. The school relies on charitable donations and all the teachers are volunteers. The charity walk finally raised the sum of £3,000 and solicitor David Hendy later flew out to the school in Cambodia to deliver the money, along with a collection of books that had also been donated. Remember the donkeys in the field next door to St Andrew's Church? Or maybe you have ridden one of them on Salthouse Fields during the summer. Well, the donkeys have moved house and the church members found that they had an empty field on their hands. This field that we're in is uh, commonly known as a donkey field, but actually it really should be known as a glebe. So. What we're doing here is a uh, Glebe community project and we thought it would be a good idea, some of us at St Andrew's Church, as the field belongs to the church and as it's not really used very much at the moment, 
we thought that we would try and turn it over to community use. Um, unfortunately, when the donkeys are in here, they're really nice to have around, but they didn't really manage the field very well, and gradually it's got overgrown with sycamore and elder, and it's not really any grass on it much anymore. So what we've decided to do is, it's quite a large field, it's about 1.4 acres, so we want to have part of it um, to establish a nuttery, which is a collection of nut trees, um, hazel, cob, and maybe one, two more. And we want to have down by the gate, we'd like to have a, something interesting for the, for the kids, young people to see. So we'd like a bit of livestock, maybe a few chickens and some geese. And um, the rest of it, we want to open up to the community as a, as a woodland walk and a place where Peter, people can just come and sit and contemplate the surroundings. By the middle of March, a large amount of tree felling had been undertaken by the team from the church, and now was the time to obtain and plant a hedge along the boundary fence by Poet's Walk. For starters, Eric turned to the Woodland Trust and made a claim under their Jubilee Woods project for 420 saplings. The Woodland Trust's aim is to plant 6 million trees during the Queen's Jubilee year, and so far they are on target with over a million safely in the ground. During the following week, a team of St Andrew's volunteers formed a conveyor belt. Some unwrapping, some planting and some protecting the delicate plants until all 420 had been safely planted. Although the team had managed to sell a large number of burnable logs, the money went to finance the project, a huge pile of thin branches were left. So the next task was to engage a man with a shredder to clear all the unsaleable offcuts. The resulting wood chippings were to be used to create the various woodland paths designed to take the visitor on their journey into nature. Along with the 420 saplings, the Woodland Trust had also included a sapling oak tree which the Vicar of St Andrews, the Reverend Terry Bailey, was invited to plant at the entrance to the glebe. And it's a, a, a sapling from one of the royal estates. So I thought it was really opportune that uh, we can plant it in March and, and sadly Terry and Margaret are going to be leaving us next month. With an interest in the environment and this being Jubilee year, it was fitting that Terry Bailey and his wife Margaret had been asked to plant this royal oak tree as one of his last duties before he retires next month. And they undertook the task in hand with gusto. I didn't think you had to do all that myself, no. but yeah. Uh, oh, it's, that's donkey poo, that. Oh, is it? <laughs> St Andrew's Church is actively encouraging the whole community of Clevedon to support this Glebe project and on its completion the majority of the site will be available for use by all comers. Just over a year since the Clevedon Pilot Gig Club launched their first gig on the slipway at the Underfall Yard in Bristol Harbourside. Named Watch and Pray after the Clevedon Town motto, the giggers spent the summer months racing in regattas around the southwest, competing in the World Pilot Gig Championships and the Silly Isles, or just rowing leisurely around the bay in Clevedon. So popular has the club become that they have now bought a second boat with grants from several sponsors including Sport England and money raised by club members.
The new member of the fleet is second hand. She was built in the Cornish town of Loo in 1996 and has had a successful career with the Carradon Pilot Gig Club in Saltash. On arrival with the Clevedon Club she went straight into the under full yard and was given a new coat of yellow paint with blue trimmings to match her sister. And Debs Wilding, who was a founder member of the club, was asked to paint the new name on the bow. The pilot gig is a 32-foot wooden boat powered by six rowers. They were used to carry the pilot out to meet merchant trade vessels and guide them through the treacherous waters of the southwest coast to a safe harbour. Superstition is rife in the boating world regarding the renaming of boats and so an official ceremony was enacted to expunge the old name. During the ceremony a metal plate containing the old name was cast into the water accompanied to the depths by a measure of the very best champagne. The blessing of the new name was carried out by the Reverend Noel Hector of All Saints Church who then anointed the boat with the genuine Cleveland water and followed by even more champagne. Blackbird was also given an appropriate musical send-off by some local musicians singing a very local Wurzels song. Where be a blackbird to point a very be? Be me a point be compared, I be a hurry. Now I see thee and he sees my chicken and we don't catch him. We'll overtake my lady, my blackbird, oh lassie. Fancy blackbird, all right! The launching of Blackbird wasn't without a slight hitch. But no damage was done and she seemed to be pleased to meet her partner who was already parked, sorry, moored on the nearby jetty. Throughout the winter, Watch and Pray has been berthed in the Bristol Marina and the club members have been practicing their skills in preparation for the World Gig Championships in the Ciliars in May. Gig racing is now one of the most popular and fast growing water sports in the South West, with many regrettas being held during the summer months. Now was the time for both vessels to travel round to their home port for a spot of serious training in the open sea, instead of the shelter of the Bristol Harbour. The journey down the River Avon and under the Clifton Suspension Bridge must be one of the most spectacular both for the crew on board and the spectators up here on the Clifton Downs. At Shawhampton Sailing Club the boats changed crews with the new teams heading their gigs out between the Avonmouth and Portbury docks to face whatever weather and indeed vessels the Bristol Channel could throw at them. They were not disappointed. Black clouds and an enormous container ship were heading their way. Such is the excitement of gig rowing in this busy West Coast seaway. Another crew change was scheduled at Porter's Head Sailing Club. What was unscheduled was the change in the weather. But experienced sailors in these waters are always wary of forecasting good conditions hereabouts and the Clevedon gig crews are far from being fair weather rowers. Finally, Clevedon's Victorian Grade 1 listed pier was sighted and after a spot of posing for the cameras, Watch and Pray was able to introduce her new sister, Blackbird, to her future home. Well done, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Down there in Cleveland Town they got this racing gig. You could start it off quite small, but now it's just got quite big. I've <laughs> got a second boat, Blackbird is his name. Every time I race it, any driving I insane. Where be 
Eating blackbird too, I know where he be. Maybe I'll pass me a little beard, I hope he ain't yeah. hurry. Now he sees I like, and I sees he jiggling the weed up and We'll overtake my lady, say, that bird on a lap in. Please, the gigs were beefing, click, and that's his blackbird. All right!